I think we'll uh, start the um, webinar with some introductions. So everybody um, who doesn't know me, there's going to be quite a few here. I am uh, Romana Kham. I'm the uh, director and uh, licensee of Prime Pot Property. A little bit uh, about myself. Uh, I started uh, as, a, as a structural engineer many years ago because of my love for property. I had this idea of designing and building my own house someday uh, when I was little. I uh, didn't know exactly that it required quite a bit of studying and a lot of money to do that, which I, I learned uh, along the process. And that's growing up in the Black Forest in Germany. So while I say that, please excuse my awkward uh, accent because it's a mix of German, English and uh, some other languages. Um, so, but I hope you'll understand me. Um, anyway, so... I've now become a real estate agent in Australia. And uh, to be specific, I focus on being a buyer's advocate. And uh, why I do that is because when I came to Australia seven, eight years ago, it, uh, I, I struggled to buy property. And uh, I didn't quite understand why um, you know, the, the structure of purchasing is the way it is in Australia. And uh, I decided that um, there is a, a need for people like myself, a buyer's advocate, to help pe people to actually get into the property market. Now, along that way, I realized a lot of people um, call themselves property gurus and you know charge a lot of money to provide advice and help uh, for people that are trying to buy or sell or develop or invest uh, in Australia. And I didn't think that was necessary. So why we decided to have Real Estate Factory is to have a forum for people to come on board, ask questions, seek advice. There's uh, industry experts that will be there to answer those questions to the best uh, abilities. And um, uh, basically, we can then take those uh, questions that require more time to you know, explore offline for the experts that are on the forum to deal with later. And it, it's all uh, a free forum. It's about people sharing knowledge, giving knowledge, asking questions, seeking advice. Um, there's a mix of people that have registered for this webinar and I'm actually quite overwhelmed by the interest. Uh, but there is, uh, you know, we've got people from Australia, we've got people from the US, from India and uh, background wise there's engineers there's real estate agents there is uh, CEOs there's directors from all sorts of backgrounds so we will try and make this very um, you know valuable to the people that have logged on and registered at the same time in that one hour it'll be difficult to cover everybody's um, questions and needs so we um, we will try our best but uh what I'll do is uh, I'll introduce you to my co-host today. Um, I'm very honored to have uh, Adam Docking, uh, Vice President of the RAV, also the Director uh, um, Adam Dockings in Vermont. I've got Vina Arburn from Lifestyle V Finance, mortgage broker. I'd like uh, both of you to please introduce yourself uh, and uh, we'll then start the webinar. Adam, would you like to start? No, not with everybody that seems to be here. I'm sort of a bit humbled. <laughs> uh, gosh. All right, look, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a second generation real estate agent in eastern suburbs of Melbourne, uh, Australia. I didn't realise this thing's going out international too, so I'm feeling a bit, a bit lucky here. Um, my background is uh, I actually kicked over 30, uh, 30 years in, in the game uh, this year. Uh, I've walked through the same door for 27 of those 30 years. So it's actually, uh, uh, I look, I, I specialise in residential real estate. Uh, we're a boutique agency. I hate that terminology, so I'm going to use the word independent. Um, yes. Look, my uh, look, I see real estate as a uh, as a professional, honourable industry. So I've sort of branched out in other things. So as uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as Romana said, I'm uh, I'm the current vice president of the uh, Real Estate Institute of Victoria. Uh, I, I'm stepping up to the presidency role come about November. Um, I'm a fellow of the Real Estate Institute, Institute of Australia, uh, licensed agent and an, uh, an accredited auctioneer. So but my background is everything to do with residential real estate. Uh, we do also have a, a commercial division. 
um, but I don't actually get very involved with that. Obviously, in real estate, it's, it's a specialised industry, sales, commercial, residential and, and rental. So, look, my background is everything to do with uh, hoping moving you guys into and out of your homes. So that's that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. So I think uh, Adam has you know, given us you know, a brief and I think everyone really wants someone solid in the industry to help support them. Well, I'm V. I'm V, our Burn Director from uh, Lifestyle V Finance. Uh, I've been in the finance industry for nearly 18 plus years. So I've been working with the majors and I've covered operations, credit, um, retail, uh, marketing, coach, etc. So finance is all about credit and understanding the policy as well as structuring and also understanding what are your clients' needs, goals and objectives. And this is um, really, really important in, you know, in our world because we all want to offer a service, but at the same time, we want to ensure that the client has the right support. Hence, today, we've come together. We have Adam, we have Ramana, and uh, it's always about teamwork to help a client at the end of the day. So let's hope today we can um, you know, provide a snapshot about our work and also we can also deliver accordingly. So that's me. That's V from Last Abbey Finance. Thank you. Thanks so much, V. So um, Real Estate Factory today is the launch of this webinar and we are, you know, uh, wanting to do that on a regular basis, depending on what uh, people are actually wanting to to get out of this. Now, because it's the first day, I really uh, we haven't sort of um, decided on a particular topic, but we'd like to give an overall market uh, sort of. Um, analysis to understand what's going on in the market, what has COVID actually caused in the last one and a half years, the goods and the bads and the information that uh, you don't really get um, out there, but rather behind the scenes, which is why we've got real estate factory where experts can come in, they can actually, you know, give you that insight that you won't find otherwise. So Adam being, um, you know, out and about for so many years, he he lives and, and breathes real estate. Uh, v is uh, an awesome uh, finance uh, specialist who's helped many of my clients as well to get uh, the finance over the line, whether, you know, we are first on buyers, investors, developers, uh, or um, just investors. So what exactly has COVID uh, done to us in one and a half years? I mean, we can all see there is hardly any stock on the market. Buyers are desperate for stock. They, they want to move, they want to buy, they're not getting any properties to buy. Now, Adam will probably tell you a bit more about you know, how he's sourcing properties at the moment because um, everyone wants a property to buy, right? Uh, I'm a buyer's advocate. It's a struggle at the moment to match a buyer with a property because there's just nothing to choose from. So how are real estate agents at the moment dealing with that problem, you know, sourcing property? So that's the real estate agent side. Now, then there's the buyer side. If you've ever seen, ever been to an auction in the last uh, one and a half years, there's at least 40 to 50 buyers to one property and only one can buy it. So where's the rest going? You know, where, what are these buyers actually doing to, to find their home? How are they um, achieving their real estate goals? Now, without a buyer's advocate, so I don't even want to talk about me. It's about uh, what is the average person doing out there? So these are a few of the uh, problems that, you know, COVID has created over the years. And uh, we are seeing uh, investors come back on the market, but immigration has stopped. So every uh, I, I can actually see vendors that are or developers struggling to sell their townhouses sell their apartments because there is no need for that i've got people that are um, paying less for uh city uh view apartments because um you know, there's no need for it at the moment. People wanting to move out, they want bigger houses, they want to go regional and whatnot. And you'll see the prices of homes in uh, outer suburbs increased uh, tremendously over the last six months or so. And Adam can um, tell you more about that. I mean, I was looking for a client in January, looking at a property, I was supposed to buy at 850, same property, went uh, to auction two weeks afterwards and sold for 1 million 20. 
So it's uh, it's it started being crazy mid mid January. Is that right, Adam? Is that what you've also noticed? Uh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Look, we COVID's been a real uh, game changer in in real estate. If, if we go back even further than than, than January, I think um, we had a little bit of prior knowledge with uh, what happened in New Zealand when they came out of COVID. So we we're kind of expecting a little bit of a rush. So when we came out of COVID in 20, what are we now, 2020, market just went off. It was just ridiculous. Uh, everything was selling and that's continued again. So um, you mentioned supply and demand issue and uh, you're right with there's multiple buyers on every property. Our record so far is 28 contracts on one property. Um, and the difference between the lowest price to the highest price was about $300,000. Um, so V, you'd probably see this a bit as well, is um, yes. that the, the difference is, is, is ridiculous. So we are in this very unique market that it's a, it's a um, uh, uh, what would you call it? A, probably a perfect storm. We've got um, interest rates that are in the historical. Record low. Yeah, record historical, low. Yes. My, for, and, and, and the, the issue we got on the other end, though, is, is uh, as uh, Romana said about investors, is uh, investors, where are you going to park your money? So uh, my father's 85 and self under retiree, and he went to the bank to put some money in there, and he got 0.01% was that what they were offering. So we've seen this for quite some time, and uh, it, it is a supply issue, but I think it's also a fear issue as well. Um, supply is now low for, for, for winter, more so than, than normal. Um, and people are trying to snap up. Uh, you mentioned also, Romana, that there's multiple bidders for each property. But what we're finding is that we're seeing the same faces every weekend at auctions. Um, and they turn up to the auction four weeks ago and miss out. They turn up to the auction three weeks ago, pay, try a little bit more, miss out. Two weeks ago, they bid higher again, miss out. One week ago, they miss out And to this week. They go, look, don't care, whatever I have to pay, I'm going to go for it. They just don't stop. Um, so, V, I know that you're sort of struggling a little bit with sort of some of these prices that are coming in there. You've, you've pre, um, pre-sorted them out at one price and they come in with a different price. Yeah, very true. I, I think what I'd like to add here, Adam, I think probably you, you, you will see this or you have seen this and it's been there for a while, is that there was a time where clients will do a pre-approval and then we'll go, we take the next step. You know what I mean? But now there's a time that, like Romana talked about, the fear of missing out. So some, what I see in the industry or what I've come across is that there, there are there are a few people who have the fear of missing out. So they go on the spot, they sign the contract, and then they come to a broker. So I see that quite a fair bit. And Adam, you agree. The, the point that we are at the moment, we, uh, what I see, because I work with many real estate, what I see is that they do not want someone who hasn't got their finance approved because at this point in time, we've got, they, they are ready to go. So we want clients who have, uh, approval. We do not want to have a ten, a, a twelve days or a fourteen days, uh, you know, a finance clause or a tw or twenty one days finance clause. We want people who have got finance approved. I think we are like Adam has said and what Romana you said as well. I think because of COVID nineteen, the way the market has, you know, has uh, pan out since last year. I mean, it's a totally different market at the moment. So yeah, totally agree with that, Adam and Romana. We, um, it's interesting, we, we do an e-newsletter uh, each week and mm -hmm. we generally put a one or two question survey with it. Uh, this week's survey was, uh, in today's market, would you prefer to buy first or sell first? Now, traditionally, it's always been sell first. 75% of people said they'll buy first now um, because it's so hard to buy and so hard to sell. And that's exactly um, what I was sorry, trying so to hard to buy, so hard to buy, so easy to sell. I'll get that right. <laughs> and, and that's exactly the problem at the moment. People are holding on to their properties because they if they sell, they have to buy into the same market. But if there's nothing to buy and they have sold their property, they will be on the street. There's nothing to you know move into unless you're happy to move into 
you know, out of skirts or you're happy to move into an apartment temporarily or something, which is not really feasible for a lot of people, especially when you have children that need to go to school or, you know, you're an older couple that uh, cannot deal with the whole move and um, to and forth. So I understand why a lot of my clients say, I want to buy, but I want to hold on to my property. I've, I've got a current couple with a young child who owns a property in Wheeler's Hill and they came to me saying we've been missing out on um, uh, a property like properties frequently and in the beginning I thought it's probably this person buyers that are struggling because their budget is really tight however this couple has got a budget of three million and they're still missing out and they're still struggling to buy I, I find it very you know, disheartening when, especially when you have children, you know, we have to go into that school zone, we have to move by a certain date. What are we going to do if we don't find anything? So, and um, it's, it's quite uh, depressing to a point where, you know, FOMO has driven this market so badly that, you know, there's no stock, but buyers are suffering fear of missing out as well. We want to buy because we know the property prices are increasing almost on a weekly basis. Um, I've had investors looking at properties and uh, they made an offer. Uh, two days later, the developer is saying the price has gone up 30,000. And um, my investor clients are saying, how is that possible? That doesn't make sense. And, uh, but it is because there's no stock and there's at least 50 people for that one property driving up the price. It's, uh, it's, it's a very bad market. So, I mean, what we want to do is we know everyone knows what the problem is, but how are people actually solving that problem for themselves or how is, you know, people like V or Adam and myself, how are we actually trying to help these people get onto the market, whether they're investors or owner occupiers. So Adam, when, when a buyer comes to you, how, how, or what, 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 what do you do to, you know, nurture them and and what do you tell them when they can't keep coming back at auctions <laughs> oh it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking. <laughs> um there is actually a question there too uh romana i don't know if you got the, uh, the chat turned on um yes there but, is. Uh, look, what, what, yeah look we're seeing the same people over and over again um as a uh I, i'd like to think myself as fairly computer literate we market properties across realestate.com social media um, and also on online auctions as well and it's so we're capturing a lot of information a lot of people's data and we're just seeing the same names over and over and over and over again look the it, it's, it's very simple to turn around and say look just keep trying but there is no other way around it i mean there's there's so many people that are in the starting gates waiting to sell if they could buy and it's this vicious circle if those people put the houses on the market there'd be more stock um so they'd have something to buy and so like that but you're right Ramona people aren't prepared to take the risk of uh either having to rent for a while um or buy something inferior just to, to tide them over mm. uh so there's not really much that you can do uh I definitely would not be lowering my expectations on what I want to buy because if you do that this is effectively pointless mm. by, um, buying um, so really it's just a matter of just keep slogging away the, the heartbreaking thing for me is uh, we have a property where we might get four building reports done so three of those people have wasted their money Yes. Uh, and the problem is, is with, uh, if you look that conversely, is if you don't get a building report and buy the property, then you, you're not quite sure what you're doing. So yeah. continue with what you're doing, continue looking, um, put the feelers out there. Real estate's changed a lot in the last, say, I'd say 10 years, really, is the old days it would be on the phone to you once a week, how are you going? There's nothing around, we'll keep looking. Nowadays, it's all about sending you out e-newsletters and, and uh, text blogs and text bombs and all this sort of stuff so really what you need to do is make sure that you have email inquired on properties through say the portals realestate.com domain real estate view all those sort of things because your information is captured and even if there's lazy and there's a lot of them lazy estate agents out there once you go on their automatic 
newsletter, um, you'll actually probably find a lot of properties. We're finding also that real estate uh, portals are horrendously expensive. Uh, to put your property on the market at the moment, say on realestate.com, is three odd thousand dollars just in that one thing. Yes. So there's a lot of vendors now that are turning to us and saying, look, try off market to start with, uh, save myself a fortune in advertising and, uh, and, and put it to your database to start with. So you'd be surprised how many properties are selling off market and you're not really finding out about those at all. So make sure that you've nominated yourself to an agency to get onto their database. How to do that? Click on their website. Um, we all have um, uh, joining functions to join our database. Click on realestate.com and send an inquiry, all that sort of stuff. Make sure your digital footprint's out there and you'll be surprised how much more property is out there than you were aware of. Yeah. And what, I, what I've actually seen also is a lot of people now are not even waiting for real estate agents to send them these off-market properties. So a lot of people are taking things into their own hands now. They're writing letters directly to um, property owners in the hope that the owner will, will sell the property to them. And um, why a lot of people are actually even selling it like that is because they're saving uh, sales commissions to pay to agents and they are in control of how much they want to sell their house for they could negotiate with the buyer directly so um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that happening at the moment simply because some of these uh, clients come to me and say you know we have tried this Romana but uh, haven't really had a lot of luck doing it ourselves and we don't really want to wait much longer for you know the property to come through from from an agent because um at, at the end of the day, sales agents represent the vendors. They're not really there to you know, nurture and help the buyers as such because that's not their job. And a lot of buyers forget that part. They, they, they expect the sales agents to help them get the property at a price that they're comfortable to pay. And that is um, very difficult for some of my sales agent uh, uh, friends um, like yourself as well, Adam, where it's hard to explain to a buyer that, um, you know, you can't really help them in that regard. Yeah, I think, uh, Romana, maybe um, I just want to ask just a question, uh, maybe to both, either Romana or Adam, maybe anyway. Do you think or would you feel that some of, uh, some of the property owners also want to hang on to their property with the speculation that the prices are going to go up and up and up and they don't want to sell? Is there, yes. well, what are your thoughts around, around this? Yes, definitely. And, and that's part of the formal. They, they know that prices are going up. They also know that oh. they buy and it's not going to change unless there is a, a big change in the interest rates. And then, you know, um, the, um, um, what do you call it? people that are buying properties left out in center will actually experience immense pressure on having to sell those properties because they can't afford to pay the uh, mortgage uh, repayments anymore. I mean, a slight change in interest rate is going to have a huge impact on the repayments, as you know, V. Um, so we, don't, we just don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, I don't think anyone knows. However, there are speculations and I, I see that question from, um, Natalie. Yes, Natalie has a question. Go yes. for it. So, Natalie, if you wanted to unmute yourself and ask that question yourself. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I just actually I just saw the news last night in Seven News, really national national uh, TV channel. So um, they advising that the interest rate interest rate uh, will go up in twenty twenty two potentially in uh, in um, like October, November, which is the best, the best time to sell the property for the best price. So um, in this situation, I, 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 I've been spoken with a few people, my colleagues, and um, our opinion actually divided. Someone thinking that it will increase more uh, uh, property price, more people will, will wanna buy at the moment, other other thinking no it's actually will decrease because people will cannot afford it and all the situation so 
I would like to know the opinion of professionals from financial industry and real estate as well. Pete, do you want to start? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think as far as interest rate are concerned, like we are very careful about what we say. I'll be very honest because uh, interest rate, um, the way it fluctuates and it also, it depends on the market. So I think there it's all about, you know, whether the Reserve Bank, how they view the market at a particular point in time. So for that one, we will leave it at that because Adam, I think Adam, you are from, you've been in real estate for a long time and you know, there's a very strong connection between the market and uh, market index and uh, research and how the market tracks an interest rate. Isn't it, Adam? Um, Natalie, while I'm talking, I'm gonna get you to unmute yourself because I'm gonna hit you with a couple of questions myself. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. Um, look, basically, one of my personal rules has always been someone that tells me what's going to happen in the future is the person you don't listen to. Um, when I very first started real estate, I was, taught, I was told a lesson and it stuck with me forever. If a developer doesn't speculate on what the future is going to do, gets in and gets out and makes his profit now, then there's absolutely zero reason why you as a, as a, as a just as a consumer should try and speculate. So don't speculate, do mm. what you want to do when you want to do it. If you're a high flying investor and the difference in 0.01% of, a, of a, uh, a cash rate makes a difference to your bottom line, then go for it. But Natalie, you actually yes. hit on something that I'd like to ask your opinion on this is you said that the market sort of the interest rates might go up in October and November, which is the best time to sell. As a consumer, I want to actually ask you, and this is a loaded question, of course, why do you think that? Well, the springtime, it's uh, okay. It's majority people thinking that the spring is the best time to sell because the property looks better more buyers on the market and 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 actually uh, vendors who want to sell the property more often listing property on the market in the springtime this is just a general general public opinion i would say i know that uh, if, if it's a good property um you can sell and with good agent you can sell pretty much anytime i know that but it's still the 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 um regular opinion from like a regular buyer. I didn't mean to put you on the spot then, but it was actually, there was a reason for the question. <laughs> Believe it or not, the second best time to sell real estate is winter. Yeah. Um, I still hold uh -huh. out that the best time to sell is August. Um, it's, a, it's just a simple supply and demand issue. The reason one of the market, the market is so hot at the moment, if we take a lot of the fundamentals out, yes. um, it's a supply and demand issue. August is a brilliant time because the vendors are all thinking, all right, I'll spend winter cleaning my house up, doing the garden, doing everything. I'll put it on the market in springtime. Uh, the purchasers are already in buying mode um, and they're desperate. In a lot of cases too, winter is a fantastic time. So again, if you're thinking about selling your property, um, I mean, look, fundamentally, you buy shares when they're at their lowest. You sell shares when they're at the highest. Mm. Um, you sell real estate when you've got the best chance of, comp uh, of, of competition for the, uh, uh, the buyers for your property than not for everybody else. So, yeah, it is a, it is a um, sort of a fundamental issue that the market's booming in springtime, but we don't necessarily see uh, boom prices in springtime because there's more choice. At the moment, um, as we said before, if you buy a house, if you miss out on a house this weekend, there's not one this afternoon. It could be a week, two, a, two weeks or a month. So um, it is, I just wanted to bring that up because, yeah, it, it is a sort of a standard answer. Springtime's the best time to sell. Springtime's the highest volume of sales. In real estate, we make half of our income in the last quarter. Mm. Totally, totally oh. agree with you, Adam, there, because uh, you want to be a buyer in spring. And because you've got the choice of property that's going to be on the market. And that really means you have to sell before that happens. So Adam sort of hit it on the nail. As a, as a vendor, you have to be strategic about when you sell. And honestly speaking, when people buy or sell their homes, they don't really look at the interest rate as, as such because everyone has a need to either buy or sell. 
and whatever the interest rate is, they will have to go with that. They're not going to be waiting for another year or two, not really knowing what the interest rate is going to look like. If you're an investor at the moment, it makes sense. You know, a lot of people are trying to build up a portfolio, uh, build up those 10 properties that they will then sell in those 10 years time because apparently we're in a property cycle mode right now and the prices will go up. Um, but that's a different story. You know, we have to look at why people are buying or why people are selling. There is uh, retirement age people that need to downsize. They, they, they cannot manage the house anymore. They want to have a smaller place. They want to live in the same area where they're living because their family lives there. They are you know, comfortable in that area. They don't wanna be moving into the suburbs, but if, if, if there's no stock in that area, they can't really go, so they're stuck in their homes. How do we help these kind of people? And then there is other people who really need to move now. They don't care about interest rate. They don't care about property prices going up. They really just need to move into the area because their the child is uh, going to school next year. So they have to do it in the next five to six months. So I believe not everybody is you know, limited to what the interest rate is. They're not limited to um, uh, property stock at all. They have a need for it and that need drives everything. I think um, I think I'd like to thank you and Adam as well, especially Adam. I didn't realize that when you said when is the best time, you know what I mean. Like I think Natalie says spring. Everybody talks about spring, but I think some valuable information there for us, for everybody, I guess. Like I'm also an investor, so um, yeah, it's a good point for me too. <laughs> um, I want to hit on one other thing. If it's alright, I just want to butt in there for a moment. Investment. Um, yes. All real estate agencies at the moment. Uh, going through a situation where uh, there's a lot of investors that are quitting the market at the moment. Uh, Romana, you hit on the uh, on the point that uh, apartment sales and uh, flat sales and so forth, oh, sorry, uh, 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 vacancies are very high at the moment. That is the case. If we look at the demographic. Um, and V, I'd be interested in your perspective on this one as all. Um, the feeling in the industry at the moment, now this is not, I'm not giving any advice or anything like that. It's just the, the noise that's coming from the industry at the moment is that there's going to be a, a very, very uh, a tight investment market, rental market coming about 18 months to two years. Um, so all of a sudden now the, the shift has been 180 degrees is that within 18 months to two years, we're actually going to see an increase in rental figures or rental prices um, because there's going to be such a short supply or shortage of, of good investment properties. So it'd be interesting to see Romana and V if you're seeing that on your side as well. Yep. Yes, I, I, th I think on, on this note, what I'd like to add, because I'm also an investor, I've been investing since the last 15 years. So what happened is we, all, we, we always had good investors, but what happened last year due to COVID, um, due to COVID-19, we had tenants where they were affected, the job was affected and so forth. So then, um, Unfortunately, um, the the rent had to be decreased. So from a, it, it, like we've been talking about COVID-19, what I'd like to say is that from a, an investor's perspective or land, landlord perspective, whether we talk about residential asset or investment or even the commercial space, we have to think at the end of the day, everybody has got that mortgage to pay. You know what I mean? So if you're an investor, you also have a mortgage to pay. And then if you don't have the right rental, then like you said, it creates a bit of a tension in this space because, okay, who is supporting who here? Because from a lender's perspective, let's say last year, you all know that the bank had um, were, uh, we did have a holiday period, you know, to support clients who cannot pay and so forth. But having said that, at the end of the day, People need to realize when you have a mortgage, you have to pay your mortgage. If you take a six month uh, holiday period that we call, at the end of the day, those interests will be capitalized in the loan and you have to pay that yourself. It's not the bank that will pay the loan for you. You know what I mean? So it's very, very important here to understand um, each one's need. So like you, we're talking about the rental market, if investors are there, they want to purchase property, they want to ensure that they will get the rent that they require. Mm. Yeah. You know? And there's a reason behind it. Yeah. 
on that note, um, just to answer Adam's question, uh, because I work with a lot of developers who have built townhouses, who have you know uh, access to sites to to build apartment buildings as well, there has been uh, a lot of sites that I've seen where the uh, uh, planning and building permit for apartment blocks has actually expired, and uh, especially during COVID, where you know developers were struggling, um, they didn't really want to start. Uh, projects where it was about apartments and townhouses because there was uh, no need for it. People don't have an interest at the moment to buy townhouses. I've had access to at least uh, 150, if not more, townhouses in the last one and a half years, but people don't want to buy. So what people are increasingly uh, wanting to purchase is property with at least four or 500 square meters of land because they see the value and uh, increase in value, especially with properties that have that land value. Whereas with apartments and, and townhouses, um, buying a townhouse is not as cheap as you think. It's, it's actually quite expensive when you compare the, uh, the townhouse value over the six, seven years when the structural warranty expires. You know, uh, People wanna get rid of it. Before, before that seven year structural warranty um, is, is gone. So the value of a townhouse after that period, they, it, it doesn't grow that much as a property with, with land value. And with apartments, builders have stopped in the last one and a half years to even build that. So when it comes to stock, yes, I totally agree, Adam. I think there's gonna be a shortage of apartments and townhouses uh, because people have not built them developers have not built them so there has been an increase uh, of uh, residential homes like freestanding homes with even small parcels of land uh, we've seen a lot of increase in places like Craigie Burn, Tarnit, uh, like the outer suburbs where property prices have gone up and and is, there's no land anymore to purchase it's very hard to you know buy land because people want to want to build they want to have their homes on land so, um, and then on the other hand, I have people who are actually renting, like young couples, colleagues in the city that are living in apartments. Um, so I had a colleague saying that he was able to negotiate a very low rental um, uh, rent for um, Australia 108. I think that's what it's called now. Um, just imagine it's one of the coolest buildings in, in Melbourne and they're giving you a discount to live in that uh, building. That's how desperate um, owners of these apartment uh, properties actually are because they're empty. So they are giving away their apartments at ridiculous prices at the moment. But saying that, because I work with immigration lawyers as well and relocation specialists, I know that expats or people from overseas are starting to come back into the country. Uh, so there's people starting to move in October, November, and after that time, towards the end of the year or probably beginning of next year, we'll see a need for more properties again in that you know, rental market. Because people that come from other countries will not uh, initially buy, purchase property. They will need to rent initially until they're settled in this country. Uh, excuse me, I have one question. Yes, yes, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, to uh, Mr. Yep. Uh, you said that uh, people are holding on to the property and uh, henceforth, there's not uh, nothing much to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, my one question is that uh, since uh, COVID-19 um, is present and uh, it must have impacted the economy, so the disposable income might be less. So one way to increase a disposable income would be to sell the property. Uh, so with that logic, there should be properties uh, available to buy? It's a very interesting question, Prashan, and thank you for actually putting that in the crowd because um, disposable income, what I've increasingly actually seen is people telling me how much more money they have saved over uh, the last one and a half years because they're not commuting. They're not going to the office. They're not buying their tens of coffees during a day you'd be surprised how much you actually save in, you know, eating out and uh, shopping, you know, window shopping, just because you are in the city working there. Um, 
I've actually seen people have saved up more for their deposits to purchase property rather than having the need to sell their homes unless you've lost your job or you've uh, you know struggled or you had to shut down your business those cases are very different but on a general note if you're just an average household i've just seen people have 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 been able to save up more now if we want to talk about people that have lost their jobs and and businesses that is a whole different story so i think that is more on the uh, a question for v because um, the impact of what happened to COVID, people losing their jobs, people have actually started becoming entrepreneurs. So they have started their own businesses, uh, have become self-employed. And that has got its uh, pros and cons. You know, it's great to be your own boss, but as we all know, it's, it takes a long time for a business to pick up uh, until you generate that income. And uh, at the same time, if you are actually uh in a new business structure and at the same time you have a need to purchase property that's a, a big monster on its own and we can tell you that because a lot of people don't know that the, the borrowing capacity or the the loan uh sort of regulations are very different if you're self-employed it's not just about three pay slips um the rules were two years of um uh tax yeah. returns to be shown to the bank so that you can prove I've had a regular income over the last two years. And uh, uh, I think that has now changed to one year V, if I'm not wrong. Yes, I, I think um, uh, as we've been talking about COVID-19, I, I think uh, everyone agrees. I think Adam will agree as well, uh, Brumana and the rest of you, that um, finance and property, they are very, very, they are closely linked. And I think what drives the market in Australia, probably the economy as well as that is, is, um, uh, is the property market as well, right? But at the end of the day, I think COVID, when COVID hit last year, it made people realize how important it is for you to understand your budget, budgeting, cash flow, and also um, if you don't have a financial planner, you don't have a good tax accountant, you know, if you don't have a good real estate agent, um, then I think it makes people understand that the way we operate in wherever we are in our society today, especially in Australia, it's all about teamwork. So in regards to cash flow, well, you need to have a very, either you have a good banker or, we have, or we have a good financial planner or you have a good broker. Now, if you need a good property, it's whether you have a very good buyer's agent who understand what you're looking for, or a good real estate agent who will help you with your needs. But, but ha having said that, we all know that everything is interlinked and work, employment, you know, um, it's all related to how you as a person want to take control of the situation and how you want to take control so that, you know, you can take the right step, the measured step, and also you can assess your risk. At the end of the day, it's all about risk. Mm -hmm. So we have all the industry experts here um, that you can reach out to and you can address any concern and move forward securely. So nothing is just, um, let's say, um, okay, finance is finance, property is property. No, everything is interrelated. So if someone is in a situation where they've lost their job, you know, then they need to know, okay, I had a mortgage. So how do I do my budgeting? How do I organize my cash flow? You know, do I reach to my financial planner or do I reach to my accountant? You know what I mean? Or if I am, I, I'm just, I just have one property. Okay. how? what type of mortgage did I have? That is very, very important. That's why when you take a loan, I always say this to Romana probably, and when I talk to my client as well, when you take a loan, we all say, oh, I've got a mortgage to pay. But look at it the other side, probably Adam will agree with me. When you take a loan, means you acquire an asset, right? So when you acquire an asset, it means here, okay, what type of product did I, do I have? whether it is from the bank or whether it's from the banker or whether it's from a broker, understand your product because the product is very important. Did I pay principal and interest or did I pay just interest only? And why did I pay principal and interest? Or why did I pay interest only? So Adam will agree, if you paid principal and interest and you have a good property in a very good location, means you've built an equity. Then 
it means, okay, what is my next step, my growth step? What can I do in two years time or three years time? Then when you talked about disposable income, Prashant, this is, uh, this is where one need to understand the bigger picture, the scenario and the structure, because it's all about structure at the end of the day. So, yeah, yeah I think- People I think are getting more and more intelligent, <laughs> basically. Yeah, if you want to say that, well, Thanks for taking that uh, question, V. That's great. Uh, Prashant, does that sort of answer your question or are you um, needing sort of more assistance and clarity around that? We're, we're very no, happy um, to... uh, Sorry? I'm, I'm going to step in just to you just one moment if I can. Um, sure. uh, by the way, Charles, I hope I'm smiling enough too because I'm seeing in the background on, on, your, on your whiteboard there, it takes a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, uh, it was hit on a couple of times before the people keeping their houses and sort of going into investments. Um, number one thing, as I said, uh, I've been a 30 year veteran in real estate. I have never walked into a bank to get a mortgage. Um, it, you, you go to a broker and that's not to say that, you know, it's not an advertisement for V or anything no, like no, that. No. A broker is the person that is actually going to be looking after you. It is not the person that's going to be looking after the bank for the next uh, next contract. So always go to a broker. I mean, they'll find the best deal for you. But Prashant, you sort of hit on the uh, asked about sort of people keeping their properties. Be very careful though that if you've gone from a principal place of residence buying another property and you think you're going to make your old home investment, be, uh, that's when you talk to a financial broker. You've got to be very careful uh, because of you can't easily make your, 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 your old principal place of residence an investment for negatively geared properties. So be very, very careful with yes, that. Yes, good point in there. Yeah. Thanks, thank you. So, Prashant, um, may I ask you, are you renting or are you on your own property at the moment? You're thinking of buying, what, what's your situation? Um, I currently live in India. Uh, I was looking for property and the market is uh, not good actually. Uh, the rents are uh, a bit high and I was wondering why it is high Hence, I asked the question because I was I thought that it should be low because people have uh, less income. Okay. So. <laughs> I saw you oh, Prashad, to... are you talking about rentals over here in Australia or in India? Uh, in India. Right. It's, it's all supply and demand. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Market. Um, look, we're, we're finding it in our, in our property management department. Um, this is going to sound like a stupid thing to say. Good properties are so hard to secure uh, for, for a good property. And again, depending on where you are, it doesn't matter whether you're in India, Melbourne, Sydney, wherever, is you choose your property based on the demographic of where you are. In the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, which is a family oriented area with the schools. So I wouldn't go out and buy an apartment. I'd buy a three bedroom minimum family home because I'm going to get a family where you are in India is it a, is it um, you're struggling to find something or the prices are high because of uh, demand of that particular market is that what you're seeing yes correct that's correct that's a good thing that shows you that investors have actually picked well um, and they know what the market's doing over there and they're and they're, um, they're buying well so that's exactly what you do when you're looking for an investment property don't look for what you can afford. Look for what is uh, is the median for that area and work on that. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's in, like it's in in India, but with uh, in in well, in Victoria, obviously as, as a Victorian agent, uh, there's a lot of data about what the median house price or uh, rental price, uh, house price or unit price is for each area, each uh, each council area. That's your best start for what you should be spending in each area. I'm sure probably. In other areas in India too, you could probably uh, tap into some sort of data to find out what the median price is. That's where you start. Yeah, that, that's a very uh, I understand that. Adam, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. Just on that, Prashant, so Adam sort of touched base on the investment side of things, which uh, we probably won't be able to cover in this session. It has to be taken, rolled over to the next one. But uh, on a general note, um, as an investor, it doesn't matter which country it is, as Adam is rightly saying. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of investors want to buy where they live 
you know they want to buy uh right next down the street where they live because it's tangible they can go and see and and control it and uh you know make sure that everything's okay but if you're a smart investor um as uh, adam said you have to look at the data you have to see what what's the demand in demographics you know what is the the growth looking like in the, the history in the last four or five years how am i going to make my money not just from the rental yield you have to look at the capital growth as well because you want to make sure your property is actually growing in value so that you can make use of the equity where we will tell you all about that you know it's about serviceability but it's also about making sure you get the the value in that property that you can use against your borrowing so the more you have the better you don't want to be buying net down down the road where you live and that property is never going to increase in value. So you, you basically um, spending a lot of money and deposit for something that will not give you that growth, if that makes sense. So many smart investors actually are doing it overseas, from overseas in Australia. Um, we, we have, you know, NDIS, we have self-managed super fund, we have foreign investment properties qualified in Australia and investors are looking at that. And that is from the US, that is from India. So if you are ever wanting to invest in Australia, I can certainly help you with that. But it's all about the numbers as an investor. And uh, I mean, we've got Mohsin here just joined in the group as well. He's a, he's a developer, investor, um, does a lot of joint ventures. So he, he can uh, give you a lot more insight um, in the next session. But uh, Moss, are you able to listen? Are you? Do you want to unmute yourself a little bit? <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, apologies, I am on the road, so <laughs> I'm just joining the call. Thank you for inviting me, Romana. Um, yeah, I, I echo you know what people are saying there. Uh, it comes down to uh, the the simple economics here, the demand and the supply. So um, you know you need to choose the areas, not where you want to live, but where others want would want to live. You know, uh, and you have to truly look at what is driving the demand of that particular area and the supply should be scarce and that should push the rentals up which would then follow the growth and uh, the growth will naturally follow the rental you know the, the growth so that's what you're seeing right now what you're seeing is the rental growth and you know the rental is quite strong and you would see that the growth in the prices would you know naturally follow you know in a six months lag time so yeah definitely agree to all of that great Thanks, thanks, Moss. And uh, we'll, we'll have Moss in uh, next month in our uh, Real Estate Factory session to go deeper into the development side of things because development is uh, Australia's favorite time pass these days. Everyone wants to be a property developer. Uh, the only thing is how do you, you know, start? Where do you start? How do you finance projects like that? If you don't have money, how do you get joint venture partners to come on board? Uh, Mohsin is uh, very experienced in that area and uh, can give you some insight on how to start. I know there's people like Rob Flux in the in the business who are um, you know, carry, um, structuring these uh, property development courses. They're, they're very insightful as well if you wanted to spend a lot of money and uh, get that insight and I, I think the data is out there it really is a matter of reaching out to the right experts to put it all together in a puzzle and um, and and uh, getting your real estate journey uh, started so we <laughs> will talk about yes Mosin. yeah look just wanted to add a bit more look uh, when it is a seller's market and you know, you know, especially in Australia right now, you can appreciate that, you know, the properties are just flying out of the door, you know, the right investment grade properties. Yes, a lot of investors are picking the wrong, you know, properties. Uh, but what's the trick of the game is that when you can manufacture your, your own equity, so you're not paying principal and interest, you're not waiting for the growth to happen. You're not, you're not waiting for the market's mercy to deliver the growth to you. You're manufacturing your own equity, you're manufacturing your own growth. That's where the truest nature of the property uh, wealth creation through property comes into place. And, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about this in the coming weeks. Yeah, it's, it's all about finding those right sites as well, Mohsin, isn't it? It's, uh, it's not just about the history. It's also about what's going to happen in the next four or five years because yeah. the development will take a few years to complete. So how do you make that forecast of deciding what is my end product actually going to be worth? when I finish this project. 
Exactly. Like, look, uh, every land people naturally think that bigger is better. Not always the case. <laughs> uh, you have to make uh, the right feasibility, the right due diligence to understand whether this particular development is going to be profitable. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, naturally the growth is going to come and it ever, always comes. You know, it's not just properties, even graves these days, you know, appreciate in prices, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of any prime real estate would go up in prices so the growth would definitely follow but understanding how to subdivide how to split a block and what does that mean and what sort of risk do you carry you know and how do you finance structure it out how do you joint venture with other people how do you join the forces where you know an individual cannot achieve anything but when you combine the forces with your friends family relatives you know you can achieve significantly more uh, and i call it you know put your you know yeah, wealth creation journey or the property journey on steroids, you know. So that's the whole sort of idea all of, of all of this. I, I like that word. Thank you so much, Mosin. We'll we'll take that on board next time for sure. Um we really just wanted to keep that one hour because uh, I think anything else uh on a Friday afternoon will just uh you know make you drop off your chairs. Um so I I think uh Brie has got something that she would um uh, want to share saying that landlords uh, seem to be getting more and more onerous. Um, so Brie, you want to just quickly unmute and uh, we'll wrap up after that. Yeah, sure. I was just really commenting as a landlord, I feel like it's getting harder to be a landlord and so much easier to be a tenant. And I have to keep putting my hand in my pocket even more and more and more. <laughs> and yeah. so apart from just wanting to release capital, it's just like, it's getting too much hard work to be a landlord <laughs> investor, in my That's opinion. That's why there's so many landlords that are quitting their investment and the law of unintended consequences. I really want to keep mine too. Have, yeah. Look, it's, um, it is a, it's a big issue at the moment. Uh, the, in, in, are you in Victoria, Bree? Where about to you? I am. Yeah. yeah, I'm in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, the Residential Tenancies Act had 132 amendments that came out, I think, in March or something like that. Um, look, as an estate agent, a lot of them are good, uh, but a lot of them are very onerous, and it's just uh, look, we're in a uh, we're in a, a government that just seems to think that it's okay to keep hitting landlords for more and more and more and more. Um, we, I think we've hit quit critical mass with regards to uh, that you as a landlord, look, I'm a landlord as well. And it's, there just seems to be every month I've, I've got a bill to fix something. Um, and a lot of it is, in, in, I look in my case, because my properties are, are, are newer, it's, it's things that shouldn't really need to be done. So yeah, it is, you're, you're unfortunately at the moment, you're a dying breed as, as a landlord. Uh, but all I can say is, look, seriously stick with it because there is definitely as a like unfortunately if you're an if you're a tenant on this um on this uh, cast you're not going to like what i'm going to say now but as a landlord uh it's going to be it's going to be uh let's say silver linings in a couple of years time because that supply and demand issue is going to string right around uh the demand for, for good properties is going to so far outweigh the supply of good properties and as a landlord I mean, within obviously legislation, we'll be able to ask more for our properties. So yeah, look, all I can say is stick with it. And um, we've got to ha have a little bit of pain at the moment. Yeah. On that note, Adam, um, you know, I, I've actually got some um, older couples, like actually retired couples that have been buying properties over the last 30 odd years. And they're sitting on some four or five or more properties at the moment. And they're saying, we want to get rid of them because land tax is so high it's not and, and we're not getting enough rental income from it it's not actually worth for us to keep these properties because it's costing us more than what it's giving us especially when you're retired you've only got a very small pension Look, to that, that's very correct um we uh in the industry we know of quite a few landlords that their tax sorry their land tax bill is greater than the uh their income uh Look, the problem is that, and again, V is a perfect one to answer this question, is that it's you've got to be very careful because you sell a property, you're always you're so also going to generate capital gains tax. So you've got to weigh up um, about where you want to do and, and how you want to do it. So again, you've got to get uh, financial advice. Don't just walk into an estate agent's office 
and say, here's my, here are the keys to all my properties, flog them all off and I'll take the proceeds. So be smart about it and do it slowly, but get loads and loads and loads of, uh, of good professional advice. Yeah, correct. Can I just add to that? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, who was that? <laughs> uh, this is Moss, sorry. Just to add to that, I think uh, hitting the nail right on the head uh, what, with what you're saying, uh, the caveat to that is that that's where the development comes into place, where we tend to JV or joint ventures with a lot of owner occupiers, you know, if, if, who are in the catch 22, if they decide to sell, there is this massive tax bill that sits at the end. Um, and how do you make sure that you know you can recoup that profit out of a development while satisfying the tax office, still keeping keeping the clean profit or the the the, the clean capital growth? Um, and I see you know more and more homeowners approaching us because you know that's how they have started thinking. You know, the big property they know that these are development potential properties, mm -hmm. and ultimately what they want is you know to yes, the tax office to take a share of it, but to make enough money through the project while you know securing their own proceeds to still go ahead um and and you know uh, exit you know safely again you know financial advice is the right word and you know everyone should seek that you know if they are making these sort of decisions yeah thank thank you so much mohsin because uh i, I guess it's i i we feel responsible i mean i we adam as a collective group i think we should share that responsibility to educate our clients on that basis where we are not the experts to give financial advice as such. Maybe we does have uh, in, in her area, but the overall, you know, there's tax accountants involved, there's financial planners involved, there is maybe private lenders involved because a development uh, a lot of times cannot just be funded with a, with a bank loan. It is a lot of people that have cash that bring in, there's joint ventures, there is, uh, it's a very complicated structure of, of financing a development. Um, so, uh, I mean, especially older couples that are pensioners, they probably don't even know who to ask. You know, it, it's even more important for, for people like us to guide them to say, hello, Mr. Client, before we even look at any property or site of, uh, to purchase or develop, please go and see X, Y, Z, because these are the people that would guide you on how to structure your maybe trust, trust fund, how to do your tax structure such that you pay the least amount yeah i think one thing i'd like to add here when we talk about construction and especially if we talk about developments and especially if it is business or commercial that is a totally different space so we have different type of lending for that yeah okay. so we do look after last time we finance we do look after residential business commercial and everything so that's why um we we, we cannot um uh say that um this is you know it, this is residential and the same laws applies or like Adam, you agree with me, like investment is investment and, you know, uh, owner occupies, owner occupies. So in the same way, a development finance, construction finance and a commercial business residential, they are all uh, different. And we do have special uh, lenders, specialist lenders as well, private funding and so forth. So uh, we can take that off uh, offline. Yeah. 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 So definitely we'll leave this for ne next time because I think uh, everyone is very clear on how residential property purchase transactions work with you know mortgage uh, brokers and banks, et cetera. But when it gets into development, I think there's a lot more um, knowledge required that is off uh, offline and it's not actually very yes. available in the market. So. Uh, that's information that can be obtained from, you know, people like Moss, who, who Mossin, sorry, who is into development, and then, um, you know, maybe we'll get uh, my um, private funding um, uh, colleagues on board as well, who can give you a bit more insight on how they structure the financial side of things of a of a development, uh, how the investors uh, need to cover themselves, etc. There's a lot of legality as well, so. Um, we will keep that for next time, but uh, I want to thank everybody that actually made time today, uh, especially Adam and V for providing their knowledge uh, and time and, uh, you know, just being there, uh, providing that support, uh, especially for, for me also. It's uh, uh, very um, uh, honorable of you guys. So thank you very much. 
for everyone who tuned in. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend, but at the same time, uh, we would like to have some feedback in terms of um, you know, what uh, value would you like to get out of this in the next sessions if you're tuning in and uh, how often do you actually want these kind of sessions to happen? If it's uh, once a month, if it's uh, once a week, because um, this is for you, this is not really for us. It's uh, we want people to get the most out of this. So before you leave, uh, would you, uh, I'll start with Charles, if you want to unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi everyone, afternoon here in Sydney. We've got a bit of rain drizzling now. Um, look, long story short, I'm an active investor, been an investor all my life, uh, quite a lot of history and technology. I'm also an ex real estate agent, so I understand the space very, very well. Uh, property here, property offshore. Uh, I've also got a, a financial planning uh, team in my back pocket. Um, so I understand the game quite well, and I know that COVID hasn't helped, and there's certainly a bit of a juggling act post COVID. So I, yeah, I work with business owners and I work closely with investors. Um, I also specialize in cryptocurrency. So I've got a lot of property investors that are sort of, as mentioned today, there's sort of some peaks and troughs in, 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 in the space where you sell your home, where are you going to move to? So it's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's a matter of, a forum lot such as this and being around having having the right assets and having the right people around you to really <clears throat> sorry i'm losing my voice now mm -hmm. to really provision the right education because on social media <clears throat> you've got a lot of real estate agents that spruik a lot of inaccurate data you know paying off a mortgage in five years without looking at cash flows and budgets and all of that so yeah but thank you for having me you know. thank you so much charles for tuning in and you know what with all your knowledge charles i'm very tempted to have you as a co-host very soon also <laughs> I, i'd be privileged thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Um, Natalie, I know you need to go soon. I'd, I'd like to thank you, Romana. Before before I leave, I'm just going to rush. I've just got something really urgent. But no I, re I really want to thank you. Thank you, Romana. And thank you, Adam. Adam, you've just, you know, given us some fantastic information. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And I'm pretty sure that Romana and Adam have given us all, like, some great information that we can take on board. So thank you kindly. Take care. And we'll catch up again. Thank you. Thank you so much, V. Thank you. Um, I will let everybody else also go unless you want to share your um, feedback and what uh, you would like to see next time. If you're tuning in, it'll give us more um, you know, insight of how we need to structure this and what kinds of topics uh, we need to cover so that we can get the right experts on board next time. Um, I'm sure Adam and Charles and uh, we would... Uh, like to continue to contribute as well but it's more about you know who do we need to get on board to give you that those answers that we're looking for so if uh, everybody else who's still online wants to share that um, that will be great before we uh, say goodbye for the weekend oh, well I'm, I'm sorry I a little bit jumping I want to say thank you so much for this I don't know, workshop, uh, Zoom call, whatever. Uh, thank you, Romana. Thank you, Adam, and everybody who attended. I just have to jump into another meeting as well. Um, wish you have a great weekend and productive for people who are working in real estate because tomorrow is still working day for us. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, and it's nice and sunny day in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, so have a great day, guys. Thank you so much, Natalie. We'll touch base offline. Um, so there's Bree and Shashi. Shashi. Okay, just left. That's okay. <laughs> um, I guess uh, we have Andy there. Andy, you want to say something? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. And I just wanted to thank you, everyone, for being a part of it. And Adam and he's not gone, but uh, thank you, Adam, for 
joining this. Uh, all the information that we shared was really insightful. And uh, yes, for future, I guess a uh, similar session would be great. Something that gives an insight into the market for obviously home buyers of all kinds, investors and first home buyers. Like for me personally, I would be pretty keen to know more about more on the investment side of things and also on the financial planning side of things. That's probably my two areas that I feel I have, uh, I need some knowledge, but uh, yeah, that's, that's my personal thing. But yeah, I think, I think you are on the right track and I think continue on with it. So thank you. Thank you very much for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Andy there. Um, I've got some iPhone. I'm not quite sure um, uh, who that is. Sorry, I can't see your name. <laughs> Hello. Hey, hey, Romana. This is Prashant. Oh, hi, Prashant. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Now, the, the, this, this session was really informative. Uh, I, I can tell you uh, some very interesting information that you and Adam shared. And it, it gets gets to gets me closer to what I'm seeing out uh, in the market, what's happening in the uh, in the housing market, especially in Melbourne. Uh, and when I relate it to some of the, the, the interest that I, I make and when I see those properties go away, uh, it's definitely, you know, something like what you guys explained, you know, definitely I can, I can feel that and uh, closely relate to it. So th thanks for all the information what you guys shared today. No worries, Prashant. Is there anything in particular that maybe you'd like uh, us to cover next time? Um, uh, just just uh, if, if there's any analysis uh, that we can make in terms of uh, where is the investments happening from in the sense, is it, is it only first time home buyers that are really, you know, uh, you know kind of buying and uh, buying the properties or is there any foreign investments that are happening uh, especially in the the eastern suburbs that where I'm focusing on, I mean, is there any insights that you guys can can share, if possible? I have some case studies at the moment. We've actually got a couple that is moving from overseas, the U.S. In fact, and they didn't want to start renting. They were they want to start moving into their home, and they're ready to pay ten million dollars for it. So wow. it's uh, you know, those numbers we look at, and I they they are very astonishing especially when people are not familiar with the melbourne market they just like something they've seen online from overseas and they are engaging with local agents here in the area to say hello mr agent i like this house can you please get it for me make it be on sale if it's not for sale so i'm get, i'm seeing lots of these kind of people from overseas um, but also local Melburnians that are coming to me to say, it's not on the market. Romana, I really want you to do whatever you can to get this property onto the market. And, you know, because we, we really want this house. And uh, I feel for buyers because when you go to the shop, you want to buy a dress, you have 10,000 shops to, to look at. So you can choose, you know, what's the best price? Which one's the best dress? But when you haven't got any house to compare with because there isn't anything on the market, it's very difficult. So, um, and I, I, I'm very sorry. I know you guys are in a position where you really want to buy and it's very hard at the moment to find something, especially when, a, when you have a really tight budget. But um, as, as Adam and V and everyone has said in the past, it's a, it's a matter of time. And you know, people who really have that need will find that property. Um, Adam, I'm sure you, you want to add something to that. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I have to wait a goodbye because I've got a 4.30 appointment. But look, thank you for everybody. Thank you for your input. Um, through Romana, uh, I'm always available for discussion, talk, advice, whatever's necessary. Um, don't hesitate to get in touch with Romana who can get in touch with me. Um, but look, I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, I do have to go and um, I'll probably see you next time around. Thank no. you. Thank you so much, Adam. Really appreciate it. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Um, I will um, come to an end today. So uh, I know there's few left here, but I will send out a follow-up uh, message and email to everybody. If they needed help and wanted to reach out, they can reach uh, me, Adam, and V. And we've got Bree and Marcin and some uh, other experts here on the, in the group as well. So we will make sure that everyone gets that message.
thank you everyone and i wish you an awesome weekend until next time bye-bye <laughs> thank you romana bye-bye have a thank nice you. weekend bye-bye